Hey, I'm always searching YouTube, like, right before exams for, you know, accounting information, how to do it, and all that jazz, because I can never really figure it out in time on my own, just using the book. Um, so, here, I figured, why don't I make one of the YouTubes and, you know, see what it's like, see why it isn't done ever. So, here's the, uh, well, here's what I'm doing. I'm currently in Advanced Accounting, that's the title of the class, and oddly enough, that's the title of the book here, too. Advanced Accounting, 9th edition, written by Hoyle, Schaffer, and Dupnik. I don't know. It's the McGraw-Hill one. And, yeah, I'm going to be working on Chapter 4, because I already failed the first, second, and third chapters exam. Uh, basically, kind of a weird spot to start out with, but, you know, whatever. I'm doing problems 15 through 19. Uh, that's found on page 183, if you're using the same version of the book as I am. Uh, so, here it is. Here's the problem. Uh, it says, well, they provide you with, uh, well, first of all, to answer these, they give you the balance sheet right here. Uh, it's a consolidated, or it's a condensed balance sheet, and here's the balance for the park company, going here, and then there's the balance for the Strand subsidiary, or subsidiary to be. Uh, oh, also note that park I mean, the author of the book usually uses uh, companies, parent companies, he uses companies whose names begin with P to ask the parent company. I'm fucking tired. Strange. And, and he also uses companies whose names begin with the letter S as the subsidiary company in his uh, examples. That's just cool. You should note that so you don't have to keep going back and looking up who is Park, what's their relationship, who is Strand. Uh, really helpful, I think. Uh, if your instructor didn't mention that, uh, you'll probably get it, but just in case, I'll mention that here. Since this is my first YouTube, Uh, well, here's the, the entirety of the problem that we're going to be using on chapter 15. All the information we need is right here. Uh, let me just read through the paragraph, now that I've discussed the balance sheets. On January 2nd, Park borrowed $60,000 and used the proceeds to obtain 80% of the outstanding common shares of Strand, the subsidiary. So, basically what that, what that sentence is doing is, it's it's really providing us with a lot of exposition of, of what's going on. It, it gives us the, the scene. Uh, usually when I come to sentences like that, I'll write a little bit of shorthand so I know what the problem is talking about because it's just very helpful. It's very helpful to visually see this. So I start with writing down the, the letter, the first letter of their name. And then I'll draw an arrow. And then here's the subsidiary. So this thing represents park. And I'll draw an arrow. And on, on paper I arc them and it looks really good, but I can't do that here. Alright, so I draw my arrow, arcing from P to S, a little arrow. And then I label that arrow uh, $60,000. And, well, usually I use K just to make it smaller. And then I draw an arrow from S to P. This one's going the opposite direction. And just write, I, I narrate that, point A to represent the 80%. So Park owns 80% of the subsidiary, and uh, they paid $60,000 for the subsidiary. Helpful information. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, sometimes I'll write the point eight down here just so it doesn't get all congested in here, but that looks pretty good to me. So 
that's my shorthand uh, I suggest you try it 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 really helps um, otherwise I'll just read through this whole sentence and I'll and then the next one and the next one and I won't really be applying uh, it to a to a built construction to a built memory and it'll just like once I get to the end I'll be like what did I just read so that's my shorthand for it um, let's move on to the second sentence oh and basically this sentence just said you know Park bought 80% of the subsidiary uh, for $60,000 and also notice here he borrowed it that implies a loan it's just a little subtle subtle little thing that they're uh, they're slipping in there the second sentence reads the acquisition price was considered proportionate to Strand's total fair value now I can't express how much I dislike this sentence because it basically it's not even saying anything logically I mean it's it's not even saying anything but what they're trying to tell you with this sentence is uh, the purchase was made at a fair value rate so the 80% that they bought of that company, that subsidiary, uh, for $60,000, that 80% of it is actually, that 80% of the company, its fair value is worth $60,000. Uh, so, yeah, bad way to say that, but he tried, so what, what can we do? The third sentence reads, The $60,000 debt is payable in 10 equal annual principal payments, plus interest beginning December 31st. Great, that one's just detailing uh, the loan. It's just telling us all about the loan that we made up here, remember? So, uh, the fourth sentence reads, the excess fair value of the investment over the underlying book value of the acquired net assets is allocated to inventory, 60%, and to goodwill, 40%. Uh, that sentence is basically talking about later on when we find uh, the access value uh, everything we did in like chapter 3 and chapter 2 or I think maybe chapter 1 as well just that basic thing when we find access and uh, it's just telling us where we where we apply the excess to what accounts because uh, it's it's not all going to goodwill otherwise it would all the excess would go to goodwill but we're sending some to inventory proportionately um, that's those are all the info statements.